Hello, this is Morris Man, and as always, I thank you for coming to my channel. Today I'm going to do another special short video, and I got a request for this as far as my opinion, and that's all it is based on my research that I've done on these two particular high-profile murder cases. And the first one is Dr. Jeffrey McDonald. Dr. Jeffrey McDonald was convicted of murdering his wife and two small children in 1970, but he was convicted of that crime in 1979. But before I go into that, I want to mention the other one. The other one is, and forgive me, I have my notes here because I want to be accurate. The other one is Muma Abdul Jamal. In 1982, he was convicted of murdering Philadelphia police officer Daniel Faulkner. Okay, so let me tackle or review Dr. Jeff McDonald's first. In 1979, he was convicted of these three murders that they claim he committed in 1970. He's a doctor. He was in the military at the time. And his account of what happened that particular night was someone broke into his house, a group of people. He was sleeping on the couch. They assaulted him, tried to kill him, but he managed to get away. And his wife was murdered in the other room and she was screaming at the time at the top of her lungs saying why are they doing this to me Jeff and they killed his kids too unfortunately now his account again is that but the police first he was tried in the military course and he was actually found innocent and then if for some reason it spilled over into the, the the court system and he was found guilty now just based on the research that I've done he claimed that there were several assailants and one was a female with a floppy hat. The police officer that night did say that they did see a woman that fit that description walking around 3 o'clock in the morning. And they unfortunately didn't follow up on the lead to bring her in and question her. But this particular person that he claimed that was there at his house, a lady did come forth that fit the description, wore a floppy hat, and she confessed to being there along with some other people and they committed the crime. She passed not one, but two lie detector tests. And the police just simply wrote her off as a drug addict, can't trust the testimony, and basically she was just kind of pushed to the side. Now, Dr. McDonald's have been professing his innocence for 30 years now. And he wants to get a new trial, and there's some evidence that he wants them to do a DNA testing on. Now, here is my logical thinking. If you are a guilty man, you are not trying to get close to DNA testing because DNA testing would be very accurate as far as the truth and the non-truth. So a guilty man would not be pushing for DNA. He would actually probably be running from DNA. So that, it leads me to believe that, and forgive me, you know, I'm just trying to condense this, but it leads me to believe that there's an innocent man that's been sitting in jail since 1979. That's just my opinion based on my research. Now, I could be wrong. You know, I wasn't there, but just based on my research and just basically the behavior of people, because when you're innocent and sitting in jail, you're going to just keep saying you're innocent until you die, you know, unless until you are released. So it leads me to believe that there is some truth in what Dr. McDonald's is saying. Uh, based again on my research and my personal opinion, I do believe that he's innocent, but I wasn't there, this is just my opinion, but that's my opinion. Okay, moving forward, uh, the case of Muma Abdul-Jamal. In 1982, he was convicted and was given the death penalty, which they've committed, uh, they've uh, commuted it down to life in prison for, for killing Philadelphia police officer Daniel Faulkner. And this is how it went. In 1982, he was driving his taxi cab. He came upon a police officer beating on a black black male. Upon further inspection, he realized that that black male that was being beat was his younger brother. So he jumps out the cab. He runs to his aid. Now here's the interesting part to me. According to Muma himself, Muma has never given a full account of what happened next. Now, I'm going to repeat that. Muma has never given his full account of what happened next. 
an innocent man doesn't stay quiet about an incident that happened and truthfully happened. So that's a red flag to me because if you're innocent, or well, unless you're covering for somebody else, but if you're covering for somebody else, you wouldn't be sitting in jail professing your innocence. So it's a lot of inconsistencies with this particular case, unfortunately. It's kind of disturbing and unsettling because according to his brother, and this is the interview that I seen his brother give, he was getting off work at three in the morning and the way that he, and he described it, in order to kind of wind down, you know, he cracks open a couple of beers and just drive around for a little while before he goes home. Now, there's nothing illegal, uh, illegal about that. Unless you're driving, you can't be drinking at the same time. And he claimed that for no apparent reason he was pulled over by a police officer from the Faulkner. I did my research and police officer from the Faulkner pulled uh, Jamal's brother put him over because he was going the wrong way down the wrong way street at three o'clock in the morning. Now that is something that most police officers will investigate. You know, are you fleeing the scene of a, another crime or what? He was just checking it out, but I was not there. So I don't know as far as the dialogue between these two and what got it heated, but his brother, interesting enough, was there of course, and he didn't testify in court on his brother's behalf and say, hey, he didn't do this. Now, I don't know about too many other people, but I love my brothers and sisters, and if something will happen, I'm going to give my testimony, especially if they're innocent. I'm going to, you know, definitely, you know, say that. But he never came to court on his behalf, didn't even show up. And they say the reason being is he was afraid because he had some uh, issues with the law himself about burglary. Now that might be the case, but you don't let your brother go to jail for life because you committed a crime you're trying to cover up. Now they, they alleged that there was another person in the car that shot police off in the Faulkner and took off running. Now here's a problem with that scenario to me. Police officer Faulkner shot Jamal. So if Jamal was innocent, why would police officer Faulkner shoot the innocent guy and let the other guy get away. And there's not that much of a mention about this third person that was there. But there's uh, allegations that there was another person in the car. But this person was found later dead and he was handcuffed and they found him naked somewhere dead. So there's a lot of inconsistencies with this particular case. And I did a lot of extensive research as far as trying to find uh, Muma's statement. I never found it. You know, I went on the internet. I went through other forms of, of gathering information. I found tons and tons and tons of video clips and audio clips of Jamal in prison talking about uh, the injustice in this country, the political awareness. He seems to be a very intelligent man. But for some reason, no one is coming forth with an accurate account of what happened that night. Because again, he's never given one account. I can't find one on print or in video clip. His brother didn't testify on his behalf. And then this other person is now no longer alive. So someone's not telling the truth, unfortunately, in this case. And it's kind of hard to determine if he's innocent or guilty. One thing that I can say is this, that I hope that justice prevail. If he's innocent, he should be released and let go, go, go free. If he's guilty, he's where he's at, you know. So I'm going to sign off now. And I would just ask to give my opinion based on the research I did. And that's basically what I've come up with. I wasn't there. I don't know what happened, you know. There's a lot of assumptions, but, you know, unfortunately, we might never know what took place in 1982 that caused a police officer to be shot and killed. So on that note, I'm going to sign off, and I hope this was interesting and informative. So you take care. Till next time.